Hello and welcome back to Reading with Mo. Today I wanted to share with you guys all the books that I am most interested in that are coming out in the spring months for this year, which for us here in California would be April, May, and June. So as of posting this, it's already a little bit into June. So some of these books will already have came out and actually I have read a couple of these books now, but intentionally uh, I would have probably posted this for you guys in March so you could really be on top of all the new releases, but you know, better late than never. And I still wanna share with you guys all the books that I'm interested in coming out this spring. There are 40 of them. So uh, let's not waste too much time on a long intro and just get straight into them. I'm gonna share these with you guys in chronological order. And I'll show the covers over here next to me of what they look like as I talk about each one of them. I'm not going to go into depth too deeply in depth with each of these because like I mentioned there's 40 of them so this is kind of just to put them on your radar if you want more information on them then you can always go look them up online on Goodreads all that stuff. Me personally I won't be getting to read all 40 of these I'm sure but I'm going to be trying to read as many as I can over the next upcoming months and throughout the rest of the year as well. First up we have the Husbands by Holly Gramazio. This is a contemporary fiction novel. We're following our main character Lauren. This is also the author's debut novel and she comes home, she lives in London late one night and she's greeted at the door by her husband Michael. The only problem is she doesn't have a husband. She's never seen this man before but according to her friends her much improved decor and the photos on her phone they've been together for years. So she's trying to figure out how she couldn't have married someone she didn't meet. As she's trying to figure out what's going on her husband Michael goes to the attic to change a light bulb and what comes down is a different husband. So I think this is a very funny, interesting, different premise and I'm excited to see how this novel plays out. Next up we have The Stone Home by Crystal Hannah Kim. I previously read If You Leave Me by this author and I enjoyed it so I want to pick this one up. It's a family drama and a coming of age story that reveals a dark corner of South Korean history through the eyes of a small community living in a reformatory center. We're following two timelines, one in 2011 where our main character opens her door to greet a stranger holding a familiar looking knife she hasn't seen for 30 years, and then in the second timeline it's in South Korea in the 1980s and we're following a young In Yoonju and her mother who are homeless on the street and then after being captured by the police they're sent to live within the walls of a state sh state sh I cannot speak state sanctioned reformatory center that claims to rehabilitate the nation's citizens but hides a darker more violent reality and this book apparently is inspired by real events then we have the titanic survivors book club by timothy Schaefert. i really love the cover on this one i think it's very beautiful and as someone who used to be one of those kids obsessed with the Titanic, I feel like I must read this book. <laughs> this author also wrote The Perfume Thief. I haven't read that book, but this is a book about the life-changing power of books and second chances following the Titanic librarian who opens a bookshop in Paris where he meets a secret society of survivors. The Garden by Claire Beams is a horror novel and the discovery of a secret garden with unknown powers fuels this page turning and psychologically thrilling tale of women yearning to become mothers and the ways the bo female body has always been policed and manipulated. Our main character is Irene Willard who this takes place in 1948 has had five previous miscarriages and in a quest to give her husband and the child he wants she's now pregnant again so she goes to this isolated island that also has a hospital and she's going to be cared for by the doctors there but it seems like things maybe are not always as they seem there. The Gathering by CJ Tudor is a mystery thriller where it's following a detective investigating a grisly crime in rural Alaska who finds herself caught up in the dark secrets and superstitions of a small town. This author also wrote The Chalk Man, which I read before and enjoyed. The House of Broken Bricks by Fiona Williams is a contemporary fiction book. We're following our main character Tess, who is a, Lon is a Londoner whose relationship with Richard transports her from a di Jamaican diaspora in the city to the English countryside where predatory birds hover over fields. Buses run twice a day, neighbors barter for honey for cider, and no one looks like her. They end up having twins, one who presents as black and the other is white, and that recasts the family dynamic, stirring up complicated feelings and questions of belonging. Next we have a short story collection, and that's A Kind of Madness by Uke Okonkwo. And I actually do have a physical copy of this on my shelf, so I'll definitely be picking this one up soon. And this is a collection of stories that are all set in Nigeria, 
and they explore the themes of community expectations, fam familial strife, and the struggle for survival. Next we have a book in translation and that's called Butter by Asako Yuzuki, translated by Polly Barton. This is a mystery thriller. This is a cult Japanese bestseller about a female gourmet cook and serial killer and the journalist's intent on cracking her case and apparently this is inspired by a true story. And we have Honey by Victor Lodato. In this contemporary fiction book, it's following Honey Fasinga, who is the glamorous daughter of a notorious New Jersey mobster, and she's returning home to reckon with her violent past. As a rebellious teenager, she managed to escape her father's circle of influence and reinvent herself in the world of art and beauty, working for a high-end auction house in Los Angeles. Now that she's returning, she decides to return home and unexpectedly falls in love. One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole is definitely one of my most top anticipated um, priority ones that I'm going to be talking about in this video. I did really enjoy When No One Is Watching previously from Alyssa Cole. So this one is another mystery thriller and it's following a the story of a new caretaker on a historic estate and she finds herself trapped on an island with a murderer. I don't want to read too much into this one just because I know um, I'm actually on the holds list at my library for this soon is going to come through so I don't want to potentially spoil myself too much since I'm really about to start reading this one very soon. Next up we have another short story collection and this one's called Weird Black Girls by Elwyn Cotton. This is a science fiction short story collection and all of these stories explore the anxieties of living while black, a high wire act of literary fantastical hybrid fiction. In each of the seven stories in this collection, characters pursue their obsessions on paths to glory and destruction while around them worlds twist and warp, oscillating between reality and impossibility. While We Were Burning by Sarah Coffey is another mystery thriller described as Parasite meets such a fun age. It's a debut by this author um, examining the intersection of race, class, and female friendship and the devastating consequences of everyday actions. After her best friend's mysterious death, Elizabeth Smith's picture-perfect life has spiraled out of control so much that she hires a personal assistant. Her personal assistant's name is Brianna, who is exactly who she needs and slides easily into her life. As soon the assistant that Elizabeth hired to distract her from her obsession with her friend's death is the same person working to help her uncover the truth about it. A Letter to the Luminous Deep by Sylvie Catherall is a fantasy novel that I'm interested in that's coming out and it's set in an underwater world with magical acad academia and a heart heartwarming pen pal romance. One of the books it recommends it to is like if you enjoyed reading Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which I did just finish reading, so uh, I'm definitely excited to get into this and see. I haven't really read any cozy fantasy besides that book, so I'm interested to see if I'm wanting to kind of do a little bit more exploring in this subgenre. Sweetness in the Skin by Ishii Robinson is a debut, um, I think it's contemporary novel about a young teenage girl in Jamaica who's determined to bake her way out of a dysfunctional family and into the opportunity of a lifetime. This next book I have a feeling is also going to be kind of a bigger book for the year, uh, have some hype around it, and that is Home Where the Home is Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose. This is a mystery thriller. Side note, I've seen um, Barnes & Noble is going to be releasing a special edition of this book where it actually looks like it comes out of VHS tape thing and I just feel like I really hope I like this book because I really want that edition. Um, so this book is a chilling family thriller though about the sometimes literal skeletons in the closet. After their mother passes away we're following three estranged siblings who are reuniting to sort out her essay. While going through their parents' belongings, they stumble on a collection of home videos and decides to, you know, watch them, revisit happy memories. But one of the tapes actually reveals their father who's covered in blood and what follows is a dead body and a pact between their parents to get rid of it right before the video ends. So that sounds so good. I just hope I really enjoy it and it's not a book that I end up being like, man, I wish this was a movie instead. But who knows, if it's very popular and good, then I'm sure they'll probably make it into a movie. Then we have Missing White Woman. This is by Kelly Gar Garrett, another mystery thriller. This one, we're following a woman who thinks that she's waking up to a romantic vacation, only to find a body in her rental home and her boyfriend is gone. So that was the last book coming out in April. Now on to the books that are coming out in May. The first one we have is Archangels of Funk by Andrea Hairston. This is a fantasy book. 
We are following our main character, Cinnamon, who's confronting threats from the Darknet Lords and the Nostalgia Militia, who I guess there's this thing called like the Water Wars, who have scrambled the world, flood refugees are on the run, disruptors and the Nostalgia Militia roam the roads wreaking havoc, and Cinnamon and her three circus bots and two dogs work with the community of farmers, motor fairies, and wheel wizards to provide housing, healthcare, and education for the flood refugees. Black Shield Maiden is a collaborative novel from Willow Smith, who you guys probably know who that is, and Jess Hendel. This is a historical epic about an African warrior in the world of the Vikings. Uh, we're following our main character. It starts off with y y Yafu who is a young warrior who's stolen from her home in the Ghanaian Empire and taken to a distant kingdom in the north. There, she's thrust into a world of savage shield maidens, tyrannical rulers, and mysterious gods. Long Island by Colm Toibin is coming out, and uh, if you guys have either read the book Brooklyn or seen the movie, this is the same author. We're following uh, another Irish-inspired story, and that's we're following Eilis Lacey, who's married to Tony, a plumber, and one of four Italian-American brothers who all live in a neighboring houses on a cul-de-sac in Lindhurst, Long Island, with their wives and children. One day, when Tony is at work, Eilis is at her home office doing the accounting, and an Irishman comes to the door asking for her, saying that his wife is pregnant with Tony's child, and that when the baby's born, he's not going to raise it, he's going to instead deposit it on their doorstep. And then we have Skin and Bones by Renee Watson, one of my auto-buy authors for sure. I love Renee Watson's writing. So I didn't even really know, need to know too much about this book before picking it up, but just so you guys have an idea of what it's about. It's following Lena Baker, who at 40 is having a steady and stable moment in her life. She's very happy in love and in friendship until a confession on her wedding day shifts her world. The Library Thief by Kuchenga Shanje is a mystery about a white passing bookbinder in Victorian England and the secrets lurking on the estates where she works. The Witches of Bellinus by J. Nicole Jones is a California gothic about a woman who moves to, si who moves to the mysterious town of Bellinus to save her marriage, only to be swept up in a hedonistic cult that isn't what it seems. Lost Ark Dreaming by Sui Davies Okumboa is a science fiction book and it's about the brutally engineered class divisions of Snowpiercer meets River Solomon's The Deep in a high octane post climate disaster novella. Off the coast of West Africa, decades after the dangerous rise of the Atlantic Ocean, the region's survivors live inside five partially submerged high towers, originally created as a playground for the wealthy. Now, the towers most affluent rule from their lofty perch at the top while the rest are crammed into the dark, fetid floors below sea level. Ruth Ware is coming out with another book, another autobi author for me. I think I've read everything that Ruth Ware has published at this point, pretty much. And this is another mystery thriller. Um, this one is a nod to Agatha Christie's classic And Then There Were None, where we're following in this thriller five couples, and they're all trapped on a storm-swept island as a killer stalks among them. This next book I wasn't completely sure about. Um, if it's something I would enjoy, I need to like read the first few pages to see if I like the author's writing or not. It's called The Great State of West Florida by Kent Wascom. This is a science fiction book and just based off of the cover alone, I was like, I have to read this book. So I'm going to give it a chance no matter what it is. <laughs> and so um, this is a startling and unconventional neon pink western of vengeance, family, and first love as two warring factions vie for control of a blood-soaked Gulf Coast. So not only because I'm spending a lot of time in Florida right now, do I want to read this book? I feel like I have to, um, but it's a science fiction as well. So I'm just really interested to see what this is, even though I'm typically not a person who picks up Westerns at all. I am going to branch out of my comfort zone and maybe I'll find a new favorite. The Word by Mary G. Thompson is a young adult mystery thriller, which I don't really hardly ever now pick up young adult books. It's very rare, but this one, stood out to me and sounded interesting, so I want to definitely probably pick this one up as an audiobook for my library. We're following Lisa, whose father kidnapped her to keep her in a cult at age seven. Nine years later, she has the chance to leave the cult, the, to live a new life, but she isn't sure if she's ready to leave the cult behind. Lastly, for the books that are coming out in the month of May, we have Flawless Girls, which is another young adult novel, and this is by Anna Marie McLemore. 
When her sister's when her sister comes home changed, a young woman discovers that the finishing school she attended has a violent history that is alive and well in this tense and thrilling YA novel. The Solaire sisters are infamous in polite society, but their grandmother, who also knows the standards that two Latina young ladies will be held to, so she secures them coveted places at a prominent finishing school. Younger sister Isla is back home within a day, but the older sister stays. When she returns months later, she is pleasant, unnervingly polite, and possibly murderous. And the same night that she returns home, she vanishes. Now for the last month, the books that are coming out in the month of June. First up, <laughs> first up we have Brat by Gabriel Smith. This is a provocative new literary book uh, featuring an unlikable protagonist. Um, we feature our ill-tempered protagonist, the, t the story's titular brat, at a low moment, but not yet at rock bottom. Gabriel is mourning the death of his father, as well as a recent breakup, and struggling to finish writing his second book. Alone and aimless, he agrees to move back to, into his parents' house to clear it out for sale. He has trouble delivering on his promises, as the moldy, overgrown house deteriorates around him, so does his own health, and large sheets of his skin begin to peel from his body at a terrifying rate. In Fragments and Figments, Gabriel takes us on a surreal journey into the mysteries of the family home, where he finds unfinished manuscripts written by his parents that seem to mutate every time he picks them up, and a bizarre home video that hints at long buried secrets. This book I wasn't sure about because it has such a boring cover, but the premise sounds so interesting that I feel like I need to give it a try. Swift River by S.E. Chambers is a complicated is a, fam a sweeping family saga about the complicated bond between mothers and daughters, the disappearance of a father, and the long hidden history of a declining New England mill town. In the summer of 1987, Diamond's learning how to drive. Ever since her pop disappeared, her, her and her mom hitchhike everywhere. She's teased relentlessly about her weight, and since Pop's been gone, she's the only black person in all of Swift River. So her mom's trying to get him declared legally dead so they can collect his life insurance money, get their house back from the bank, and finally move on. The Road to the Country by Chigozi Obioma is a mystical, heart-racing, sweeping novel about a university student in Lagos trying to save his brother and himself amid the chaos of Nigeria's civil war, a story of love, friendship, and personal triumph. I haven't read any other books by Chiozi Obioma, but I definitely have had them on my radar, so maybe this will be the first one I pick up. Youth Juice by E.K. Sithu is a horror book described as American Psycho meets The Devil Wears Prada, outrageous body horror for the goop generation. It, we're following a 29-year-old copywriter who realizes that beauty is possible at a terrible cost in this surreal, satirical send-up of New York City it girl culture. I am definitely here for all these weird, like, health, wellness-related mystery, thriller, horror books. I have not read any of them yet, but I've been hearing so many that come out that sound so interesting. So this is one that's definitely on my radar. Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay, or Tremblay, I think is how you say it, is another horror book that's coming out. And this is a chilling twist on the cursed film genre where in 1993, we're following a group of young guerrilla filmmakers who are spending four weeks making a horror movie, a notorious, disturbing art house horror flick. The weird part is only three of the film scenes were ever released to the public, but nevertheless, it has a rabid fan base, and three decades later, Hollywood is pushing for a big budget reboot. One of Our Kind by Nicola Yoon, I'm looking forward to because uh, Nicola Yoon is another one of my auto buy authors, and this one is a mystery thriller. It's described as Get Out meets The Stepford Wives. And this is her first adult novel, so I'm really excited to see how this goes. It's a terrifying and thought-provoking look at what it means to be truly free in America as a woman uncovers a secret about her new home in a utopian community. That Night in the Library by Eva Jerksik is a mystery thriller about one night locked in the library, what could go wrong? On the night before graduation, seven students are gathered in their university's rare book library. They're not allowed in after closing, but it's a perfect place for what they're trying to do, which is recreate this ritual that's performed from the Greeks said to free those who take part in it from the fear of death. But just a few minutes into their celebration, the lights go out and one of them drops dead. As the body count rises with nothing but the books to protect them, the group must figure out how to survive the night while trapped with a murderer. So this very literary mystery, locked room mystery sounds right up my alley. Devil is Fine by John Vircher is a novel about what it means to be a father, a son, a writer, and a biracial American fighting to reconcile the past. 
Reeling from the sudden death of his teenage son, our narrator receives a letter from his attorney that he's just inherited a pot of land from his estranged grandfather. He travels to a beach town several hours south of his home with the intention of selling the land, but upon inspection, what lies beneath the dirt is much more than he can process in the throes of grief. Middle of the Night by Riley Sager is definitely going to be another big book for the year. I have read everything by Riley Sager, another auto by author for me. I don't always love his books, but I do always find them interesting and I enjoy listening to them on audiobook. This one is described as being in the horror and mystery thriller genre. It's following a man who must contend with the long ago disappearance of his childhood best friend and the dark secrets lurking just beyond the safe confines of his picture-perfect neighborhood. The Assassin of Venice by Alyssa Palombo is a historical fiction mystery thriller and we're following a, re a renaissance courtesan who must choose between love and duty in this high-stakes 16th century mystery. It's following Valentina Riccardi who is beautiful, cultured, deadly, and she is a famous courtesan who is perfectly positioned to seduce powerful men, get them alone, and assassinate them. Spies, traitors, who they are doesn't matter, only that they made an enemy of the Council of Ten. The shadowy and seemingly omniscient power from which Valentina takes her orders without question. Next up, we have The Glassmaker by Tracy Chevalier, which I believe I read a book by this author before or I could be wrong, but I believe they also wrote Girl with a Pearl Earring. This is a historical novel that follows the fam a family of glassmakers from the height of Renaissance era Italy to the present day. It takes place in 1486 and Ursula is the eldest daughter of a family of glass blowers on the island revered for the craft. As a woman, she's not meant to work with glass, but she has the hands for it. When her father dies, she teaches herself to make glass beads in secret and her work supports the family and skipping like a stone through the centuries in a Venice where time moves slowly as glass, molten glass, we follow Ursula and her family, I think through like multiple generations or like through multiple centuries. I always love a multi-generational family story, so this sounds perfect for me. Then we have Lucy Foley is coming out with another mystery thriller, and that's The Midnight Feast. Um, I haven't read all of Lucy Foley's books, I don't think, but I have read, read a lot of them. Similar to like Ruth Ware, and um Rachel Hawkins and um and Riley Sager she's just one of those auto buy mystery thriller authors that I just can easily listen to an audiobook and know that uh, for the most part I'll enjoy it. I don't really have too much information on this one except that it's a deliciously twisty new locked room murder mystery. It's welcome to welcome to the opening weekend of the manor, a luxury resort built on top of old secrets in an ancient wood. The founder, the husband, the mystery guest, the kitchen help all have an agenda, all have a past, but not everyone will survive. And then last but not least, the last book coming out in June and the last book I'm counting as for spring is The Liquid Eye of a Moon by Uchenna Awoke. And I, it's described as a Nigerian catcher in the rye. This is the author's debut that breaks the silence about hidden and dangerous contemporary caste system. We're following 15 year old Dimka who dreams of the day his father will be made he village head. He'll return to school and maybe even university. His mother will no have longer have to break her back foraging for wild food to sell at the market. And his family status as the lowest Igbo caste won't matter anymore. But when his father's pass over for a younger man breaking tradition, Zimka realizes that he must make his own fate. So congratulations if you made it to the end of this video. That is all 40 books that are coming out this spring that I'm interested in reading. Obviously I'm not going to be reading all of these but I will be trying to read the ones that are like my top most interested in. I would love to read all of these if I had the time but I'm glad to be I can at least share it with you guys and then you guys can read them and you know spread the word if they're good books as well. Um, let me know if there's any books that are also coming out these months that I missed that you are looking forward to and that's it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!